He flows in the river, soars on the summer air. His love is all around you, the Prince of Life is there. Mike Silver, and thank you for joining us. Today, the title of this talk is, is Sin and Death Normal or Abnormal? And we're going to start with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you give us every day. And we ask your touch on this talk, Lord. Teach us what is from you and what is not, what is good and what is bad, what is normal, and what is abnormal. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, these flowers here, these are normal. These are natural, right? They're in a, a vase of water. They're living things. If you take them out of the water, they're going to die. These are artificial. These are plastic. You know, there's no water in here. You know, they're already dead. They're not alive. They look nice, but they're not as nice as the, uh, the real thing. So, is it normal to sin? Is it normal to die? We're used to living with these, these realities for so long we assume this must be how God planned for things to be. We can't imagine a world without sin and death. However, we pretty much believe up in heaven there's no sin and death there. But what about here on earth? Was it God's plan for sin and death to be a part of what we experience? You know, we have a tendency to think, and it must have been because God knows everything, right? It must have been a part of his plan. But how does God know everything? You know, many use the term omnipresent as one of the descriptions of God. You know, the term means what it says, that God is present in all places at all times. This does not mean God controls everything in the sense he can or will change things after they happen to conform to his will, whatever that will is. Things continue to play out in the present as they happen and cannot be changed afterwards. But what God can do and has done in the case of Jesus going to the cross like, is he can put input into the present something which overrides the present, something that reaches into eternity itself to give us a way out of our present dilemma. God can impact all present circumstances in an omnipresent way from eternity. He doesn't change present circumstances per se, but he impacts present circumstances by giving us a way out of the present, if that makes sense. It's kind of like this. You know, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God didn't step in and say, okay, stop. Let's rewind this. I told Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Let's go back and get this right. <laughs> God didn't do that. He told Adam and Eve, now you're going to have to bear the consequences of your decision. Because you ate of the tree I told you not to eat from, you're going to die, just like I warned you would. But then God declared the seed of the woman, Genesis 3.15, or a descendant of Eve's would come to destroy the serpent and his deceitful works. God couldn't change the circumstances of what had taken place, but this coming descendant of Eve's would provide a way out of the curse that came as a result of Adam and Eve listening to the serpent. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my dad. When my dad was a teenager, he lost his father and two older brothers. You know, Overnight, he became the man of the house. He applied himself, worked hard, put himself through college, supported himself and his mother. He married at the end of World War II, earning his living as an engineer. He and my mother raised my siblings and I in the Lutheran faith. He was a good provider. 
He was good to my mom and to his kids. He was a good Christian man. When he was 81 years old, my mother came home from church and found him lying on the floor dead from a heart attack. We commonly say someone who dies like this, that they died from natural causes. Even though my father was a good man, he did not die of natural causes, but from unnatural causes. He died in disobedience to God. He died from sin. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. Jesus taught it doesn't matter how a person dies. People die because of sin. I'm going to read what Jesus said in Luke 13. First couple of verses. Now on the same occasion there were some present who reported to Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. And Jesus said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were greater sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered this fate? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. So do you get what Jesus is saying? There were some people that died, and Pilate had taken their blood and mixed it with sacrifices in some bizarre demonic ritual. It seems the people who reported this to Jesus were appalled at what Pilate had done, but they implied this wouldn't happen to God-fearing people. They must have done something really bad. To undergo this fate. Jesus responded, Jesus responded, he said, no, they didn't. They weren't worse than anybody else. In fact, if you don't repent, you're going to die just like them. Then Jesus said this, or do you suppose that those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them were worse culprits than all the men who live in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Jesus is saying that those who died when a tower fell on them were not more evil than anybody else because they died like this, but if you don't repent, you're going to die too. Do you get what Jesus is saying? It's not important how we die. It's important why we die. We die because of sin. It doesn't matter if we die in some satanic ritual or die from a tower falling on our head or die quietly in our old age at home in our sleep. We all die because of sin. God does, not, God does not desire anyone to die from sin. God commanded Adam not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in that day you eat from it, you will surely die. Genesis 2.17 Dying is not normal. Dying is not normal. This is normal. Dying is not normal. This is artificial. Right? Dying is abnormal. It is disobedience to God. It is sin. It is not what God intended. It is not according to God's plan. We are meant to die in Christ. This is normal. This is natural. 2 Corinthians 5.14 says this, For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. So according to this verse, we have already died in Christ because he died for us. Here's another verse which sheds, sheds more light on this. This is um, from 1 Corinthians 15, 21 and 22. For since by a man, Adam, came death, by a man, Jesus, also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. We were appointed to die Hebrews 9, 27, because of our father Adam's death. But we are made alive by Jesus Christ's death. So what does this mean? How does this happen? How can we die in Christ and not die from sin? Is that even possible? Paul said this in Philippians 3, that I may be conformed to his death, to Christ's death, in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. That's verses 10 and 11. Jesus is all about life. All about life. Even his death brings forth life. Eternal life to we who become conformed to his death. Jesus' death is greater than dying from sin. Jesus' death removes the sting of death. We inherited from Adam. 
2 Corinthians 4, 10 to 12, verse 16 says, We who believe in Jesus are always carrying about in our body the dying of Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So Jesus' death works in us, and our inner man is being renewed day by day. Dying in Jesus is normal. Dying from sin is abnormal. The Bible says Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, 1 John 3, 8, and to restore us back to what we lost, to what is normal. How much we want to leave behind death sting and embrace eternal life is up to us. God put two trees in the Garden of Eden. He did not want Adam to eat from the tree of death. He did not want to appoint Adam to die from sin. That was unnatural. That was abnormal. God wanted Adam to live, to live forever, to live as natural, to live as normal. When Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, they died an unnatural death. But dying in Christ and attaining to eternal life is what we were created for. It's what, plan, it's what God planned for us ages ago. That's what it says in Titus 1-2, long before he put Adam and Eve in the garden. John 12, 48 says God's commandment is eternal life. Titus 1, 2 says God's promise is eternal life. Psalm 133, verse 6 says God's blessing is eternal life. And 1 John 5, 21 says that Jesus Christ is eternal life. To die in Christ and to attain to eternal life is the most natural and normal thing for us to do. Natural and normal. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He gave you freedom This is natural. This is what is normal for us to die in Christ. That has to do with life, eternal life. This is artificial. Dying like we think is natural is really unnatural. Dying from sin is unnatural. It's not normal.